Planescape, the classic D&D setting, is coming to 5e in October 2023. Will it recapture the planar magic of its second edition AD&D roots, or will it be a disaster of multiversal proportions? Hey there, adventurers. Welcome back to Short Rest Studios. My name is Judd, and this week we're talking about Planescape. Originally published in 1994 as part of second edition AD&D, this classic Dungeons & Dragons setting is a setting like no other. Planescape focuses on the outer planes, those planes of existence outside the material plane where most of our D&D adventures take place. It's a place where belief and philosophy can shape reality. The weirdness that is Planescape is finally returning to D&D after a long hiatus with the brand new box set Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse. The box set includes Sigil and the Outlands, and yes, apparently it's pronounced Sigil. That's a 96-page setting source book that includes things like planar character options, details on the city of Sigil, also known as the City of Doors, descriptions of the Outlands and the gate towns that lead to the Outer Plains, and a, a whole bunch more. Then there's Turn of Fortune's Wheel, a 96-page hardcover adventure that's set in Sigil and the Outlands. And then there's Mort's Planar Parade, a 64-page bestiary of the Outer Plains. And then, of course, there's a double-sided poster map of Sigil and the Outlands, and there's a four-panel Dungeon Master screen that looks pretty cool. So this week, we're going to talk about six reasons that I think Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse is going to rock the multiverse. And you want to stick around to the end because I am going to talk about one thing that can bring it all crashing down. Reason number one that Planescape is going to rock the multiverse death and resurrection. Death was always an interesting proposition in Planescape, and this time around it is no less so. In Turn of Fortune's Wheel, that 96-page adventure book that comes with this box set, it's really an adventure designed to introduce new players to the setting. The adventurers, in the beginning of the story, wake up in the mortuary in Sigil. They wake up in the mortuary because, well, they died. So apparently there's some kind of multiversal glitch, glitch happening. And the multiverse really doesn't know what to do with these PCs. So rather than shuffling them off to whatever afterlife they're supposed to go to, you know, whatever happens to you when you die in Planescape, the multiverse resurrects them as another probable version of themselves. And that could be, as one of the creators put it, uh, another version with a mustache, or it could be a totally different character. Pointing at me right now as you say that. I think this is really cool because it gives players the opportunity to change not only the appearance of their characters, but class and species, the very functionality of the character in the game. I mean, they could, you know, come back with goatees like the Star Trek Mirror Universe, or they could come back as basically a completely different character. I mean, it could also lead to characters deciding to kill each other so that they'll come back as the artificer they need to build a magical device or the rogue they need to pick a lock. Or maybe they'll just kill the bard to stop his terrible singing, but then he comes back as a terrible comedian, and that's maybe worse. Reason number two that Planescape is going to rock the multiverse. The Mimir. So yes, a Mimir is a magical construct made of a silvery metal, at least it was in the original Planescape, and it contains vast amounts of information. The Mimir floats around, you can ask it questions, it's basically your own personal encyclopedia. And in the beginning of the adventure, Turn of Fortune's Wheel, you come into possession of a Mimir, and it's got some holes in its knowledge, which leads to a mystery-solving quest. Reason number three that Planescape is going to rock the multiverse belief shapes reality. This is arguably the most iconic part of Planescape. The Lady of Pain rules over Sigil, the City of Doors, and she allows no god to exert control over the city, yet the very inhabitants of Sigil shape the reality of the different districts by their beliefs. The more adherence a philosophy has, the more tangibly real that philosophy becomes. And there are factions that are shaped by the beliefs of these different philosophies. And it's even possible for the PC's beliefs to create their own faction. There are dangers to this too. There are the gate towns that exist at the portals leading to other planes, and they are shaped by the philosophies that those planes represent. And they can become too much like those planes that they're close to, and then become absorbed by them and cease to exist. Hey, if you're enjoying this preview of Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse, do me a favor, hit that like button. It lets me know that you like what I'm doing and it helps other people 
to find these videos. And if there's something you're excited about seeing in the new Planescape, why don't you let me know in the comments? Let's talk about it. Reason number four, Planescape's gonna rock the multiverse, the Planar Wanderer feat. This feat is a new addition to Planescape and it gives a PC the ability to adapt to extreme conditions like one might find in these various planes and places closest to them. It also makes them really good at finding their way back to a portal that they've traveled through before. The best part, portals require keys and those keys could be any kind of object, but the planar wanderer can open a portal without the key. This could be overpowered in the extreme, but it could also be a whole lot of fun. Reason number five, that Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse is gonna rock said multiverse, the Gate Town of Automata. So the Gate Towns, and they're part of Planescape lore from editions past, but 5e seems to be expanding on them a bit. The Gate Towns are towns that have formed near the portals that connect the planes. And these towns take on characteristics of the plane whose portal they sit next to. So the gate town of Automata sits at the portal to the plane of Mechanus, which is of course extremely orderly. And so the town is extremely orderly. In fact, some people say that it's more machine than town. He's more machine uh, than man. And of course this town is peopled by machines like Modrons who are obsessed with keeping order. And of course, Modrons are quirky and weird and fun and just kind of cool. I think they're awesome. Imagine your players tampering with the machinery of reality and being confronted by these kooky little planar robots. That sounds like fun to me. All right, reason number six that Planescape is gonna rock the 5e multiverse. And this is the big one, Time Dragons. So Time Dragons are part of the original Planescape. Who knows? if they're gonna make any changes to them in 5e. Time dragons are dragons who experience time in a non-linear way, and this in the past has allowed them to intervene at key moments in time. It also means that you could meet a dragon who already knows you, or you could meet a dragon who remembers eating you. One of my favorite things about the old school time dragons is that they have two breath weapons, and one of those breath weapons actually hurls its victim into the future, removing them effectively from the time stream until everything else catches up to. So there are my six reasons that Planescape could very well rock the multiverse, but I do have one concern, one thing that could cause the whole multiverse to collapse in on itself. Okay, maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration. So there's one thing that does concern me about this, and that's low stakes. Mmm, stakes. When you look at Turn of Fortune's Wheel, the very beginning of that adventure, involves resurrection from the dead. You're probably gonna die early on and you can come back. What is this gonna do to the stakes of that adventure? And is that something that permeates all of Planescape or is it something that's specific to this adventure? I don't know the answer to that question, but when death isn't a thing, the stakes become really low. You have no reason to fear your villains. You have no reason to fear dying. You know, I made a joke earlier about players possibly killing each other so they'd come back as something else to help with the quest. It wasn't really a joke. If you remove the finality of death completely, I mean, what really are the consequences if things don't go well? 5e's death save mechanic has already kind of lowered the stakes on death, but this could just completely do away with them. Making your success or failure feel inconsequential or meaningless removes all tension and excitement, and what's the point of playing the game? Well, there you go, adventurers. Those are my six reasons that Planescape is gonna rock the multiverse, and I am optimistic that it will, and my one concern that could cause it all to come crashing down. If you enjoyed this video, once again, please do me a favor, hit that like button. It it really helps me out. It helps other people get to see the video. Subscribe to this channel so you can keep up with what I'm doing and check the description down below because there'll be affiliate links and that kind of thing so that you can support me in this channel in other ways. And finally, if you're excited about Planescape Adventures in the Multiverse, let me know in the comments. I want to talk to you about that. In the meantime, check out my preview of the latest 5e adventure, Fandelver and Below, and I'll see you next time on Short Rest Studios.